So today we are going to be painting this guy, the, the cutters from Pan Oceania. So I'm going back to my favorite topic of painting text from Infinity Corvus Belly. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan from Phalanx Miniatures, welcome back to the channel. I tried out quite a few new techniques with this one and I'll walk you through them so that you can learn from my mistakes and maybe use some of them in your own projects. So let's jump into it. So first of all, I wanted to make sure that I get the nice blue color on this guy, right? But he's a big boy. And if I wanted to do it in the, let's say, traditional way, I would be blending all the different colors one after the other, and that would take me a long, long time. So instead of uh, doing that, I decided to apply a, a trick that I picked up from Sergio Calvo, who I'm watching currently, and I really encourage you to give him a go if you haven't seen his work before. Maybe go to his Patreon, because he explains this really well. But what I'm doing is basically just using very thick coats, Obviously, I'm not trying to model up any of the details. I'm just making sure that everything is covered and then I'm applying one layer after the other without trying to blend, without trying to be careful about nice fading effects or anything like that. I'm just simply putting on the color and making sure that it's covering everything I need to cover. So this paint is barely thinned. It's just coming right off my wet palette. I just took it out of the pots, put it on the wet palette, and it contains as much moisture as you would get on the wet palette and uh, whatever remains on my brush, but I'm not adding any water to it really. Once I'm done applying two layers, and obviously they are not blended very well, right? Then here comes the next trick. I'm using an airbrush to blend them. I'm just kind of applying a glaze through the airbrush, you could think of it this way. Uh, it's a very thin layer of paint and I'm using the, the brighter color that I used before to then just blend between the two layers and make sure that there is a nice and smooth transition. To be perfectly honest, if I had to do this again, I would probably not do this many stages of airbrushing. I would just do maybe one or two uh, at the very end. Once I applied all the different layers, I would just blend them together as one instead of between every two layers. Uh, because now I'm way more confident in this actually working and I see that it's relatively easy to do so I would not have to spend so much time uh, jumping between airbrushing and, and painting. It was working, right? Like it was not the most efficient thing but obviously this blending with the airbrush was working quite well so I just continued this way and I used the next color in the same thick dilution without paying attention to blend the colors once again because the airbrush would do that for me and I applied all the edge highlights and the highlights with that one. And at this point you might notice that I'm doing the edge highlights but I'm doing them quite thick and that's on purpose actually because here I just want to define all the edges, that's very very important but at the same time I already know that I will be painting with brighter paints thinner lines within those thick ones so there's no sense in me trying to make it really super thin because otherwise then I'm just going to obscure them later completely so you know this is the time to enjoy thicker edge highlights not super thick but thicker than usual at least so on the, on the box art, you could also see that this model had more than just one type of blue on it, which I think is a really good idea because it would be a little bit boring if, if the whole model was just like one type of blue. So I followed suit and I added a little bit of blue green into my original Prussian blue and used this to, to paint some of the, the, the blue elements, like for example, the ones on the leg, on the shin uh, and the, the face, um, the fins. And this will provide me with a little bit of variety in, in all the blues around this model. So at this point I was also like kind of confident in my airbrushing abilities and I used one color after the other as well. So I could actually like blend one blue and then the other one, um, changing colors in the airbrush. But one word about this that is very, very important that the trick here with the airbrush is dilution. Right? You, you really want to go super diluted with the paint, like so much so that you would probably not even think to dilute it that much. Like 90, 95% water and thinner kind of combined in 50 50, and then you add like 5% paint in it, which is once again Sergio Calvo's method, which I like more and more <laughs> in my own painting process as well. And then you just apply very, very thin layers, slowly drying each and every one of them. This is gonna be so much faster than painting with the brush still, but you have to be a little bit patient and like apply one layer after the other until the, the two different uh, blues are blended together almost perfectly. Once I reached a certain stage with my blues, I felt that I wanted to see the other colors around uh, the model as well, because if you apply a lot of highlights with the blues and you don't see how that compares to, let's say, the non-metallic metal around it, you might go a little bit too high and then you won't be able to make the non-metallic brighter than the, the blue, which would obviously look weird. So I decided to, to start on the non-metallics, which if you have seen my videos 
uh, on the channel previously, I applied a very similar method where I use scale colors. They have their own set for non-metallics and that worked for me perfectly here. So I started with an abyssal blue first. The process is exactly the same as the other one. So I'm just painting with thick layers, adding more and more of the brighter color in it to highlight. And then I will use the airbrush to then smooth out the, the whole thing. But it's different though from my previous method is obviously once again using the airbrush because previously I used glazes to, to transition one layer to the other. So I applied the two layers, did some dots in between them and then I glazed over it, which is a very slow and arduous process. It works, but if you want to achieve a really smooth finish, you really need to put in a lot of time. Well, with the airbrush, you can just do that, apply a way more smooth finish and you can do it in minutes. So an important thing to note here is that for me, at least, this is a huge advantage because this allows me to really concentrate on opaque layers to completely cover something. Because previously, maybe kind of subconsciously, I'm not sure, I tended to not fully cover with my, my highlight layers from non-metallic metals because I was already conscious of the fact that I have to transition the two layers or smooth out the two layers. So if I fully cover it, it will look super harsh and I don't want to do that. And in the end, that meant that my non-metallics were not contrasty enough, right? But this time, because I know that the airbrush is going to smooth it out, I am not concerned about making sure that the transition is perfect, so I can just concentrate on actually covering everything that needs to be covered. Essentially, it frees up my mental capacity, in a sense, to, to concentrate on the painting part and not on the blending part, if that makes any sense. So once I was okay with the, the non-metallics, I saw how this whole thing is gonna come together a little bit and the, the airbrushing once again was working, which was the biggest concern of mine before I started this. Uh, I started applying the, the higher highlights and I was concentrating on the non-metallics being the brightest on the model. I'm not sure how well I succeeded. I think um, this is something I need to pay more attention to in the future. But normally your non-metallics should be the brightest on your model, right? Because they are basically sparkling, that the light is reflecting on them. And everything else should be less bright. Um, well, this blue is kind of like a non-metallic as well, I guess you could argue. But still, I wanted to have the blue a little bit less bright and the non-metallics to be the brightest. But at this stage, my biggest concern was just to, to place the highlights. And I mostly was concentrating on the edge highlights because th for me, at least, that's the easiest way to do this. Every edge has to be highlighted, at least with the first highlight colors everywhere, right? So without any thinking process really behind it, this you can already do. You don't have to figure out where you are going to put um, the, the brightest highlight on anywhere on the armor. All you need to do is to make sure that all the edges are highlighted. And that includes not only the actual edges, but also the fake edges. And what do I mean by fake edge highlights? Um, well, normal edges are obvious, right? When there's a material or like an element and then it just ends. Obviously then you like highlight the edge where it ends. But there is also many places on the model and you will catch me doing this quite a bit where let's say two elements merge into each other or, or touch each other. And ideally the way you highlight this is that you highlight both of the elements where they meet and then right at the at the point where they meet you also divide them by a dark line between the two highlights so every time something merges into the other or meets the other element you draw two highlights one on each and then in between those two highlights you should have a dark line separating them the reason you want to do this is because well this is a, a miniature well the cutters is quite big for a miniature right but there is still a lot of really small elements on it and if there is no distinguishing between the different um, elements, so there is no defining lines and black lines and highlights, then the viewer is just going to see this as a big blue blob. There is not going to be anything distinguishing the different elements and it's going to look bad. Okay, so here you will see me do something that uh, is a bit different from how I did it before with the airbrushing because instead of using a lighter color to smooth out the transition, what I'm doing is I'm using a, a darker one and it's actually a contrast paint because I wanted to do two things with it. I wanted to smooth out the transition but at the same time I also wanted to give it a little bit more contrast and darken the, the whole thing a bit because I felt that I overdid it a bit with the highlights and the whole thing looked a little bit washed out. So you can do this with a contrast paint or with, um, with an ink or just with normal paint as well but inks and contrast paints are super saturated so if you want to give it more saturation i think this is perfect for that 
so once I was done with that and I was happy with how the model looked, I wanted to go into the, the higher highlights. And you see me doing a lot of edge highlights here because once again, um, that's the easiest way to start. Once you go to the next stage of your highlighting, just start with all the edges and then you can fill out the rest. So once you drew in all the, the edge highlights and the fake highlights and whatnot, then you will see how much space you are left with. And then you can decide where to put the rest of the highlights. And that's really up to you. Like really don't, I would suggest not to stress out too much about where you put them because it's kind of arbitrary in a sense. Like it, there is no real science behind it, except just don't highlight something that is facing downwards, right? Obviously, because then the light would not catch it as much. So just try to figure out where you want the model to be highlighted and put some bright spots there. And that's, that's it. However, there is, there is a big lesson to be learned about edge highlights here as well, because um, I realized this kind of right before this model. And I'm not sure how much I managed to apply it, but it was definitely a principle I wanted to make sure I, I practice on this one, is not to actually over highlight my models. So I'm not sure about you, but I noticed that I developed this kind of reflex almost to, to highlight all the edges. I see an edge, I highlight the edge. and um, that's because everybody always tells you how important the edge highlights are, and they are very important, but you should not highlight all the edges with all your highlights. And the reason for that is that if you do, then the whole model is going to be exactly the same everywhere. Like all your highlights are going to be the same brightness all over the model. And just think about that for a second. That just that cannot be right, right? Because there is parts of the model that should be in shadow. Those edges should not be as highlighted as the ones that are on top of the model, let's say, where the light hits and they are sparkling. So when you do this, you do a couple of things. First, you are destroying the saturation of the model, right? Because there is not going to be a difference between the lights in one part compared to the lights on the other parts. Even if you actually painted shadows in on the panel itself, if the highlights are the same, you're sending this weird message to the viewer that that thing is, is in the light because it's it's highlighted so much, right? So you're destroying the saturation and you're destroying this idea of the, um, the viewer that, that this is a thing, this is a real thing in a real world in this scale, right? That is catching the light the way it should because it's just unnatural. The way I was trying to kind of force myself to, to work this way on this model is that I only allowed myself to use the first highlights everywhere. Like that was the only one that could go everywhere on the model, even in the shadows, because you have to really define every element. The second one could already not be used in the shadows. I was just not applying the second one in the shadows. Maybe here there are a couple of dots just for fun, but that's it, no proper edge highlights but everywhere else, right? And then as I went up with the really high highlights, let's say light blue and ivory, if you pay attention, you will see that I really only use them on the upper facing edges first, like let's say with the light blues, and then with the ivory and getting closer to this like almost pure white, I really ever only used it on the, the upper edges, the most in the light edges, you know, the ones where I really wanted to make it sparkle. And maybe here or there, I did a couple of dots, but that's basically it. No proper edge highlights with that in the shadows. So the other thing I identified myself doing that led to over highlighting is just to cover up too much of the previous layer. And here, once again, I was trying to not do that as much as usual. I'm not sure if I managed to fully succeed because I once again have this kind of like reflex to do this, but the trick to, to make non-metallics or any surface really uh, be highlighted properly and make it like super shiny is not to cover it fully in white. It's actually about the contrast. You should not cover more than let's say 80% of the previous layer if you're using let's say five layers to represent non-metallic metal. Because if in the end you don't see the graphites, the anthracite grays, the abyssal blues that you used, you only see let's say the pure black in the shadows and uh, the ivory on the top and maybe even the pure white, then there is no contrast. It's just black and white or it's just pure white at the end and the whole thing just looks desaturated. 
that's one of the reasons you saw me actually using the the ink or the contrast paint before to the airbrush because I felt that I was already doing this that I was already covering way too much and the whole thing looks a little bit washed out so that's the nice thing about this approach with the airbrush as well that it's super easy to bring back the saturation if you lost it before with the airbrush just kind of like airbrush glazing over the previous layers with darker colors and then problem solved just be conscious of this that it's super easy to do it's super easy to over highlight your model so just try not to do it. Okay, so let's finish with some fun stuff uh, at the end. As I told you before, this model is really blue, right? So I wanted to bring in some color and also wanted to maybe differentiate it a little bit from the box art to make it my own. And um, the way I did it is I wanted to show some kind of like glowing effect from the ground because he's standing over this reactor, let's say, and that's the way I interpreted it. And that thing is glowing and I decided to make it glow red uh, and then make it kind of like have an OSL effect uh, on the, the underside of the model. And applying this is super similar to how I did the, the glazing with the airbrush over the colors because I just used a very, very diluted paint and that includes a very diluted contrast paint as well for the saturation. And I just applied many, many very thin layers with the airbrush, it took me just a couple of minutes really. And I just stopped when I felt that this is this is fine uh, and that I had enough glow going on. It's worth noting that there is a thinking process behind using red here. Like you could be using green as well, but I think it wouldn't work as well because red is just a great complementary color to blue and it works really well in the shadow of blue things. If you watch stuff on my channel, you already noticed that I tend to use something bluish uh, for red when I apply shadows and the, the opposite when I have something blue then I tend to apply a red shadow. And then I just finished off the whole thing with the red accent colors as well with the lights uh, on the model like different indicator lights being red as well and the, the muzzle of the gun and everything glowing red. Um, as I said before red is just a perfect complementary color for, for blue. And to finish off the whole thing I just added a couple of transfers because I was too lazy to do um, free hands myself like I did on the previous tag and I think they worked pretty well. I messed up some a little bit but uh, then I fixed them and in the end I like it quite a bit. And this is the end result. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked the video and you found it useful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. See you in the next one.